Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Music Room Sessions Live. It's... Today it's my pleasure to introduce and welcome back one of Chiba's local favourites and a big supporter of... Tokyo, Tokyo's too. Uh, and Tokyo? And a big really? supporter of offbeat photography Tokyo. Oh, Tokyo. Please welcome, Miki Eko! Hey! Hey! hey. The hurtful discourse in the art of your war has left me empty bloody on the shore the dedication the ridiculousness of fate will leave you tortured by decisions that you make but don't ever say nobody cares because nobody really does How are you this evening? I'm Superman! Fantastic! Thanks for joining us again at Offbeat. Um, let's just give a quick introduction about yourself. Okay, uh, my name is Mickey. I'm from an island called Prince Edward Island in Canada, and I have lived in Japan for about 10 years. Awesome, awesome. Alright, let's just go a couple of preliminary things, get them out of the way. So, when did you first get started with music? Uh, my father's a drummer. And so he practiced in our basement. We always had music in our house. I learned how to play the drums around three. And uh, then I played guitar, but not very well. And uh, my first bands, I wrote the songs, but played the drums, because mm -hmm. I wasn't, uh, I was a terrible singer. Now I'm just an okay singer, so I, I rose to okay. Now I can sing my own songs. Oh, fantastic. And so, who do you draw on for inspiration? Who are your musical influences? Uh, I think when I was younger, when I was learning to play the guitar, it would be probably like the Beatles, Tom Petty, and a Canadian band called The Tragically Hip. Oh, yes. Uh, I them. Who I'll be uh, I'll be tributing at the Canada Day party at what the Dickens oh, on July first. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Um, and Gord Downey died last year, and uh, so this is kind of a special one because I think everybody's going to be ready to mm. sing along. When did you start getting involved with music here in Japan? Uh, when I moved from Kashiwa to Funabashi, I started playing um, in Chiba City. And uh, so I got, yes, but like nine years ago, oh. I, uh, I started uh, jamming with people in Chiba and then got situated with uh, some band members, and, yeah, but mostly in Chiba, not Tokyo. Uh, let's move on to um, a bit more in depth with a couple of your projects you've got going on at the minute. Yep. So let's start off with Dear Lucy. That's right, Dear Lucy. Can you give us a quick overview of the project? Sure. Uh, Dear Lucy is a zombie folk rock opera. Um, it started just as uh, me doing what I call recording, which is a portmanteau of writing and recording. So what I would basically do is I would write a song at the exact same time as I was recording it. And I just had an idea that, about a guy feeling guilty for getting his girlfriend uh, you know, eaten by zombies because he didn't believe her. She mm. thought zombies were real and he didn't. And then the week after that, I thought, hmm, what does he do now? Mm -hmm. And I wrote a second song. And then I just kept doing that every week. About three years ago. Okay. So was there something that sparked off the initial idea? I was playing Minecraft and there were zombies in it. Um, I also used to watch uh, The Walking Dead. Mm. Um, but I was always frustrated watching The Walking Dead because um, 
things they tried in one episode that worked kind of, they never ever thought of doing again. <laughs> so like one episode they all dressed up with like zombie flesh covering them and they figured out that the zombies couldn't detect them. And then they never did that ever again. <laughs> we found this massive this, like, amaz <laughs> this amazing thing that can help everybody <laughs> and they never did it ever again in the show. And uh, I, I kind of started to get fr frustrated about it. Um, but I don't know, Walking Dead uh, cheats a very important TV rule the same way Pokemon does. You guys know Pokemon? Yeah, of course. Pokemon is uh, basically a role-playing game, but nobody gets hurt because there are these cute monsters fighting each other. So you don't kill somebody. Mm -hmm. So you can still have the same rules of like an RPG game because they're cute little monsters fighting each other. And what Walking Dead does is there's a rule in movie and TV that bad guys don't have faces. People who get killed don't have faces. Uh, just think of any, like, stormtroopers, mm -hmm. think of any movie. Bad guys don't have faces. They only have faces when they get redeemed for something. So Walking Dead kind of cheats that because they get to say they're zombies, but you still see the crowbar go through a person's head. Ah. You know, so it's kind of cheating a little. And, uh, I, yeah, I stopped watching. <laughs> Me too. But he did spark off one of the ideas that sparked well, off. Well, I, I well. gotta give Minecraft the, the zombie credit. But uh, <laughs> I'm a vampire guy. I'm not a zombie guy, actually. I love vampire stuff. Mm. But I made a zombie opera. So was that one of the challenges then to, to write something, pushing yourself outside of that box, perhaps? Yeah, but it, you know, I like post-apocalyptic or near-dark future kind of stuff. So that was kind of, mm. you know, like, my, my questions were, what would happen, really what would happen yeah. if this kind of stuff would happen. And you know, the character in the, in the story, he meets a farmer who uses the zombies as horses, you know? That's a great way to use the energy of zombies. They don't seem to die. Yeah. Why don't you get them plowing up the land, you know? And, and uh, use that, you know? It's like Good zombies idea. could be better than solar. You don't run, you don't have to even run away from zombies. They can't even run. You know, unless it's like in 28 days later, virus zombies, you know, like that kind of thing. So you didn't go for that? Like you that the, 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 yeah, the kind of classic. It is still a, a government conspiracy for population control that caused the zombie outbreak, but yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and how did you go about uh, so, <coughs> telling the story through the interconnection of the, the, interconnection of the songs? Uh, it kind of started just a, as that first song, and then the second song was that he was on the run trying to escape the zombies. And then I just tried to kind of answer my own questions of how, why or how would someone actually hear these songs if someone wrote them during the zombie apocalypse. Okay. And uh, that's the, by the third song, this gets introduced because he finds a zombie college kid with a philosophy textbook. And then he uses this philosophy textbook as his journal to write his letters to Lucy, mm -hmm. who he still feels guilty for, for going to the Dairy Queen and getting turned into a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> so it becomes his journal, and he makes some sketches. There's some fire. Uh, there's some diary stuff. There. Oh, there's a nice uh, riverside grave that he, that he sketched. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, an important uh, part of the story as well. That's a, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty one of the darker moments. Mm. So yeah, definitely you should go down to check out the live performance yes. to what understand Dickens, what yeah. that means. Yeah. What the Dickens, July twenty second. Uh, email me for tickets. Yeah. So how long did it get take you to get to the current state? I think you were in there. Uh, we did, uh, we did it uh, in Canada uh, last summer. And this, this version has, has had a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. um, one is controlling vocabulary for a Japanese audience yeah. um, to just try to make it accessible to people who maybe aren't first language uh, English speakers. Um, and uh, Tom Oleski plays Dr. Michaels, who is kind of like the host uh, or the uh, chorus of the of, of the event who speaks directly to the audience and as an audience member you are playing the part of the no vent 46 committee who 
originally were brought together to help population control ah. and to create a virus that would uh, would reduce the world population by 25% over two generations, but they turned into zombies. Oh, those, those government types, hey, oh. <laughs> What are their faces yeah. red? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, and you said, so is there anything more about the, the actual live version of it? Um, yeah, so it's, uh, I'm a zombie, um, and uh, Tom is a doctor. The musicians are all playing scientists and doctors, mm -hmm. and uh, it's basically, the format is basically Tom is introducing his experiment, uh, they reanimate my brain and show you the last hour of my life, where I happen to be singing 11 songs for some reason. And then they uncover why I'm singing those 11 songs, but you've got to come see it in order to find that out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Challenge for you. Can you sell the show in one sentence? The Walking Dead meets Tommy. <laughs> traps they don't think it's different but in the west they're in the mountains they've seen the blood and torment Lucy I'm sorry that I didn't believe you cause that's just such a part thing to do to believe in things like zombies are true well they are and they got you The drive through started changing before I knew. They came down from the hills, sat at Dairy Queen and killed. Lucy, I'm sorry that I didn't that's just such a fucking hard thing to do to believe in things like zombies are true where they are and they got you you have sort of going on at the minute yes, yeah. uh, is the, your play, play My Guitar project. <laughs> yes. So can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, so first of all, a few uh, Chiba musicians who are uh, mostly writers um, have tried to take some uh, Chiba musicians and performers who may not be writers, who play covers mm -hmm. mostly, and we're trying to basically write originals for those people. So we started a label, or like a record label, mm -hmm. called Sen City. Um, I 
I recently moved and uh, added to my home studio, and I, I call the stuff I do uh, Oak Seed Productions because um, my last name is Acorn, that's an oak seed. So I've been using that uh, production name uh, since uh, for about 20 years actually when I used to uh, produce plays um, back home, back in my hometown. So basically Sen City and, and Oak Seed, mm -hmm. we're trying to find people who want to uh, record using my guitar so we're basically kind of making it like a strict like the elements are strict so mm -hmm. I'm doing the recording it's with my guitar but you come and sing your song yeah um, and we will eventually uh, release a compilation of that but then that is just kind of the starting point because mm -hmm. then we hope that people who are involved in the project are going to contribute their effort in other ways to create things bigger than just acoustic vocals. Okay. So for example, if a bass player who recorded, he could do the bass on one track. And we kind of have a currency, it's kind of a, like a coin system, where your effort involved in whatever it is gets you a coin. Yeah. Okay? So uh, how many coins do you think it takes to make a CD? Approaching the 100 mark? Maybe, yeah. yeah. Um, so, for example, there are guys who play guitar who might do graphic design. So they may be able to make an album cover for somebody uh -huh. else. So you can spend money. You can give me money if you just want to make something. Yeah. But the, the thing I found, especially in Tokyo, uh, is that there is so much effort being put into just a show. And so people spend a lot of money practicing, they spend a lot of money on trains and mm. all that stuff, and then they play a live show. And I guess it, it, it's fun, I guess, but after it all is over, you don't have anything. And I have a feeling that the same amount of effort that people put into hours and money, mm. they could actually record yeah. something and, and have it after that live show. And. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, you've got great equipment and it's just me, so hopefully this stuff sounds good, but when you've got a full band and someone has a small microphone on their camera, yeah. that's not going to be a good indication of, of that live show. So we're just trying to grow something um, using the effort people are already doing. Yeah. But how about have a souvenir afterwards that's like, you know, hmm. something you can be proud of. Yeah. So you can take to the shows and say this is why. And I'm sell it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Help fund the, 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 the recording the studio. Exactly. Or, or the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. practice studios yeah, yeah, and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I guess it's like this. If you are playing a live show and you don't have anything to sell, why are you playing the live show? Hmm. I mean, it's okay if it's that you love to play and it's fun, yeah. right? But then people in Tokyo will complain about Norma systems and things like that. And so I'm confused by that in a lot of times. Mm -hmm. If you've got something to sell, that would be a good reason to play a live <coughs> show. Because the people are there and you could sell them your album. So the actual recording that the musicians coming and playing the guitar, <coughs> how far you into that project? Uh, we, we have about 11 musicians ready to go. We finished three people so far. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had interest from some people uh, farther away from Chiba, uh, but most of the people that are scheduled are, yeah. are, are in Chiba. But please, <coughs> Again, if you can go an hour by train to yeah. play a live show, can you, can you go an hour to record? Yeah, I, ho I hope so. Yeah, yeah well, it would be definitely be interesting to hear the, uh, the outcome of that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Potentially it has. Um, I'll say just walk us through then one of your recording sessions just okay. so people can get an idea. Sure. Uh, we basically will start with just recording with a click track mm -hmm. with the vocals and guitar just so they can do it for a reference mm -hmm. and then we will record the real guitar track yeah. uh, then we will record the real vocal track and that's that's about it so it's just literally person yeah. voice yeah one and, acoustic and, guitar and everybody you know the the setup is the same for everybody so mm -hmm. when we finally do get a, a 20 track cd 
it's going to be the performance that you're going to hear because mm. no matter what, if you think I, I suck at recording, everybody has the equally sucked version <laughs> of the recording. So you know, it's it's up it's up mm. to the up to the people. Yeah. But there must be some challenges in doing it this way as well. Then, as we'll talk about. Uh, I don't think it's a challenge. Like like I don't know. You know, a long time ago, people used to go into a recording studio and like with 50 bucks, which would be like, I don't know, $500 now. Mm -hmm. And they used to put a, like, uh, a needle on a raw, empty vinyl. Yeah. And they would go, okay, here you go. Record until that vinyl's finished, and then there is your vinyl. And that's all they had. And uh, if you listen to music from the 50s and 60s, it's amazing, right? Mm. And that's literally what they did. <laughs> so, like, what I have is that. Ah, okay. Right? Yeah. I have that, that same stuff. So, <laughs> you know, uh, it's like, I, what did someone say, like, uh, Sgt. Pepper's was recorded on an 8-track or a 4-track or something like that, you know? Like, they, they were limited in the mm. technology, yeah. but they could still create something, something right? Yeah. Oh, so, fantastic. no overdubbing, no, like, second take. Just just do it. That's the challenge. <laughs> So if music, musicians are interested after watching this, yeah. um, it's still running, how can we get involved? Just email, email me, say, you want to come into Chiba? You want to take that hour train ride, not for a live show, but for a recording session? Yep. Fantastic. All right. In your own purpose, the mutiny in your mind will leave you sharpened with scars from the vine. The dedication, the ridiculousness of fate Will leave you tortured by decisions that you make But don't ever say nobody cares Because nobody really does And if somebody says that they care what they want from you. Alright, so you really got a question? What, what song you played the first time on the guitar on your guitar? On the guitar? Okay, so for memory's sake I have to say it's a tie. Okay, mm -hmm. there are two songs yeah. and it's almost the same song. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are Wipeout and the Batman theme. And that's the first thing my brother taught. I don't know how old I was, but my brother's four years older than me, and so it's basically going. And did it that's tough because, like, like I said, because I was a drummer, and so I I was drumming to stuff and I was writing the songs um, yeah but by the time I don't know if you ever heard of Olga O-L-G-A the online guitar archive oh no but okay. it's really funny like before musical downloading you know mm. music downloading stuff uh, there was like big lawsuits over Olga which was tab and chord charts oh, wow. and they at that time like in 1997 they're saying this is going to ruin the music industry. You can't share these chords for stuff, right? And like how how quaint, you yeah. know? Like how quaint, five years later, they're like, you can't download all of the Beatles albums, <laughs> right? And they were really, like, there were lawsuits, and, and Olga got, they went underground, and, and uh, you had to go to, like, secret sites to find chords. Now that's just so uh, sweet. Ultimate guitar. Just, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, Ultimate Guitar Archive, yeah, yeah. But it was called Olga way back in the day. Ah. And so I was on Olga like in, I don't know, this is like 96, 97. And that's like uh, Tom Petty, uh, Tragically this Hip, The Odds. Guy. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Full Moon Fever is a great album. I love your music and lyrics. Um, I want to ask you, when you write a song, um, do you consider the, the music or the lyrics first. What do you what do you, do you write the, the lyrics to fit the music, or do you write the music and then think about how the lyrics can fit into the lyric? Right. Or the yeah, music. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, you know, 
it's it's a debate, right, for a lot of people. I used to write lyrics, pen and paper, and write the lyrics out, and or poems, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I've done that a lot. And then crunch some chords over it or whatever. But in the last, I'd say, like, it, yeah, 15 years, the last 15 years, uh, what I do is I first, because I'm chord based, I'm not a lead guitarist, so I'm not, I'm not writing a hook with the guitar. I'm trying to write a hook with the melody. Mm -hmm. So I'm writing chords and I just bang on the chords until mm -hmm. I feel like that's something. And then what I'll usually do is just mumble phonetic gibberish to see the cadence of what would fit. Mm -hmm. And then that gibberish will become the lyrics. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, as I said before, like most of my songs are kind of like letters to people, like letters to my friend I'm angry at, I'm letter at my friend I'm sad at, I'm letter at my friend I'm happy. And, you know, there is this kind of like a little bit of a conversation, like I'm mm. speaking to someone and I'm not speaking to everybody mm. to say, don't stop mm. believing. Some of, you know, some of my, like my own personal favorite lines that I have made, right, come out of that, out of the gibberish into something. Mm. But a lot of the times there's other things that I just, I come up with and I say, okay, wow, I'm going to, I'm going to have to use this to make something, <laughs> right? Like I have a song where I say, uh, uh, I know you don't like it when we say we love you, but I know you don't like it when we punch and shove you, right? And that was for a friend. Like, that was like, I had a friend going through a hard time, mm -hmm. and it was just this idea mm -hmm. I had of these mm -hmm. two, I, you know, these, how you do it, right? Uh, what is it they say, like honey or vinegar? Mm -hmm. You know, do you, do you, how, do you, how do you get your friend to not die? Mm -hmm. Do you say, Hey, smarten up, you oh, yeah. stupid idiot! Or do you say, "Come on, man, you can do it. Right. You can do it." And uh, that line just came out of that frustration mm. of not knowing how to mm. really, like, you know, good, coach good. something, right? Yeah. yeah. But I, I would say that generally, that's how I do it now. I, I the the lyrics come last because it's my strength. Mm. Yeah, your lyrics are great. So yeah, yeah. you know, and I, I, I know, um, you know. <laughs> I, like I said, I rose from being a terrible singer to a mediocre singer. What, what kind of time the most you think, think of cool lyrics and cool melody? The iPhone has really uh, helped. I mean, I use notes, you know, the, the, the app notes. I use notes and I use a, a the thing I use is called Voice Record Pro, but like a, a memo voice thing. Yeah. And those two apps, uh, like if I die, okay, please check those two apps because there are like four albums worth of songs that will be released after I die. And hopefully, like cool. Coco and Tom Petty will sing those songs, you know. All right, well. Thank you very much for all your comments and questions. And um, okay, where can people go to find your music? Ah, to find my music. Um, I guess the cheapest way where I won't make any money is from Spotify. Um, if you listen to one of my songs on Spotify, I will make point zero 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 one yen from it. Wow. So if 10,000 of you listening right now could listen to my song on Spotify, <laughs> I'm going to get a yen. I got all my 27 yeah. subscribers to go. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm on iTunes and all that stuff. I have a SoundCloud uh, account, which I usually use for like unreleased demos mm. and stuff like that. Uh, and I filled up the time. And Spotify says, hey, you filled up all your time with music. Do you want to upgrade to pro? <laughs> like extra gigabyte I want to oh. give them money so I can put more stuff on their site. I love that. It's, it's cute. Hey, it works for but that. Yeah, check it. You know, yeah, yeah. Or or on uh, YouTube as well. Yeah, there's stuff on YouTube um, and a physical CD you can yep. buy from me. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and. We've got the big, big uh, Lucy show Dear coming Lucy, July 22nd. July 22nd, What the Dickens. It's a zombie folk rock opera. It is not a live show. 
It's not a concert. It's an opera. So we're going to sit. We're going to listen and enjoy, yeah. I hope. And I'll probably cry. We should laugh. We'll cry. Yeah. And, and spew. Let's spew. <laughs> Uh, what other shows do you have coming up? Uh, I have the Canada Day thing, uh, July 1st at What the Dickens. I've got my monthly open mic in, at American FM, Mike at Satomi in Sudanuma High. Yeah. Um, Funabashi, uh, the 24th in Funabashi I'm playing with uh, Hide Maru and uh, Koji. Mm. At uh, Pizza Shop, there's a rock, Ooh. talk, and art show. The Sand City Sinners are playing at the International Music Party at Star Night in Chiba. And that's a kind of Sen City, like the late June 23rd. 3rd, yeah, June 23rd. That's always a really good party. Uh, the Japanese acts they find are phenomenal. Oh, they're, always, they're always just mm. interesting, not typical thing that you would see but it, like it's really and nice that's run by in part by the slow wolves club that's the slow wolf yeah oh, they're there yeah. the slow wolves club um and uh chris the drummer uh is one of the kind of big movers for the sen city trying to get yeah you know trying to write stuff for other people Last one, where can people go to find out about your two projects? Uh, Mickey Acorn Music on Facebook mm -hmm. and uh, check out the uh, you know Tokyo Gaijin Bands page. Yeah. But please don't post your shows on the page. Post, yeah. post about making a show, yeah. but don't post about the show. All right, well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for joining us. Go check out Dear Lucy, July 22nd. And thank you again to um, Infinity Books for having us. Ladies and gentlemen, Mickey Acorn. Things, cause they think we can destroy them. 